Time now for an exclusive interview with the former Home Secretary, Tory party grandee, the architect of the Rwanda plan initially, is Dame Priti Patel. Now, thank you very much for joining us. It's very nice to see you. Lovely evening. to have you on the show. Important day for news, actually, because mm. Chancellor Jeremy Hunt delivered a crucial autumn <clears throat> statement, didn't he, to the nation. That was a bit earlier today. And he's aiming to bolster Britain's economy and, quote, reward hard work. I'll just show a little clip of what he said. Our choice is not big government high spending and high tax, because we know that leads to less growth, not more. Instead, we reduce debt, cut taxes and reward work. In response to... Yeah, there we go. So, uh, what was your reaction to that? So, quite mixed, to be perfectly honest. I think, first and foremost, you know, I'm a low-tax Conservative. I actually believe in targeted tax interventions, so tax cuts that are specifically targeted to businesses, but also individuals. So, there are certain things that, you know, I would like to have seen happen that didn't happen. But if you look at the politics of today, and that is quite important... I think the Chancellor, I think Jeremy Hunt, has kind of like just nudged the door open a little bit. It's kind of like showing a little bit of leg, basically, um, in terms of that true Conservative narrative. We're low tax, you know, we want to give people more of their money. And the measures that he announced today, they don't go far enough, for, and mm. we'll talk about that, yeah, yeah, yeah. such as the cut to national insurance, that's important. And it's significant because he said he's going to bring it forward to January next year. And, of course, the public will start to feel the benefits of that by the spring next year as well. So you can read into all of that in whichever way you would like to, potentially in terms of the electoral politics as well for the government. So a couple of things there. Where would you like to have seen changes? Where would you like to have seen it go further? So I'm a great believer in unfreezing those tax thresholds. So it's known as fiscal drag. There are many people on low incomes, basically, that get caught in, you know, that tax threshold that has been thro frozen, basically, the personal tax allowance threshold, and also the higher rate. So, for example, many of our public sector workers, you know, our police officers, our nurses and teachers, they now get caught in that fiscal drag, which basically means that more of their income mm. just gets hoovered up by the exchequer. And the evidence today is very clear. The OBR have published it all now anyway. So in the next, well, this year alone, the Treasury will rake in something like £12 billion through fiscal drags. That's more people paying the higher rates of taxation. Mm. And you could argue it's actually a tax increase without it being a direct tax increase on individuals in terms of the headline rate of tax. And by 2028, mm. so in a few years' time, basically, um, so many more people will be caught into, into that Four million more lower workers will be. Three million more people will be paying the higher rate. And on top of that, the OBR have forecast that the government will rake in, wait for it, nearly £45 billion of extra revenue just through fiscal drag. And I think that's one area where changes should have been made. Could mm. still be made next year. Don't rule that out. Could be made next year in the spring budget and would actually make a big difference to people um, having more money in their pockets. I mean, it does sound a little bit like you've identified quite a lot of negatives there. I mean, Labour might be quite happy with what you've just done there, do you think? Sure. Well, I was in the chamber today in Parliament speaking about this. Mm. Ironically, there were Labour MPs saying exactly the same thing. Mm. And they themselves were quoting from the OBR. Now, I don't think Labour would change that at all, quite frankly, because... It's not, and it's not just about politics, OK? So the reality is we have to look at why the government is in the situation that it's in right now. Has some fiscal headroom, made mm. cuts to business taxation. Some of it's good. There's more, again, in the future that could be done. And obviously on national insurance. But we have to be very honest as well. State spending is at a record high. Government debt is very high. You know, we are trying to get that equation right Do you think right this could have been a out. Labour Party budget, really, or Labour Party autumn statement? No, I don't. Definitely not. Mm. I think Labour would have taxed more. And also, I think there would have been higher levels of public spending. Now, you could argue, how can it get much higher? Well, under Labour, mm. it would. It is our job as Conservatives, and I say this as a Conservative backbench MP, to, you know, hold the government's feet to fire to ensure that actually they are pursuing efficiencies when it comes to public spending, that actually they're not increasing public spending when they don't need to, and at the same time, making sure we've got much more productivity in our economy, in our labour market, and ultimately trying to reduce the burden of taxation on businesses and on individuals. OK, well, look, it's interesting stuff about the autumn statement there. Uh, we have also seen, you know, there was this 
dramatic reshuffle that was got this time last week in a mm. day or two, wasn't it? Some rather familiar faces re rejoining the front benches. Yes. I'm showing a video here with Cameron, we've got James Cleverly, we've got Rishi Suna. Go, what, do you, what do you see when you look at that? What do you feel? Well, I was obviously in David Cameron's government um, yeah. back in 2014, 2015, and I actually was part of that national election campaign in 2015. I have a very significant amount of respect for David Cameron. You know, he, we went on to win a Conservative majority government in 2015, and I think he did a lot of good things, actually, back in the days of the coalition. Didn't feel like it at the time, by the way, because we were making tough and difficult decisions. Um, he, David Cameron is respected. Lord Cameron, I should now well, say. Well, yes, it take some games. He, so. he is respected and he's a respected figure in the party. I think, however, though, speaking quite candidly, um, people would say, well, Rishi Sunak has tried to separate himself from the past. He's yeah. given speeches about that recently. And then, of course, he brings back former political figures when actually, I mean, there is this debate going on right now, Foreign Secretary that's not accountable to an elected chamber in Parliament. Now, I think, you know, that's, that's a topic of discussion and debate. But at the same time, it's a bit odd that, you know, the current Prime Minister could not find um, a foreign secretary from his own backbenches and chose that route. And I don't mean that in a disrespectful way at all to Lord Cameron. David Cameron has well, many, many attributes and qualities. And I think he would be, you know, he's going, going to be very good in that role. Yeah, I mean, there is also the kind of Remain Brexit argument, isn't there, really? He's already come out and spoken a bit about, he's had to row back on this, about the foreign aid yes. discussion. Yeah. He was quite critical of Boris. They've always had uh, an interesting relationship. Sure. Uh, and it does feel to me as though maybe is the antithesis of what a lot of the 2019 Tory voters wanted. Of course, yeah. And Patrick, I think you're right. You know, a week in politics is a long time, right? But actually, when you reflect back from 2019 to where we are right now, it feels like it's gone full circle, so to speak. And with that in mind, I mean, look, I take the view that, number one, we need to forget you know, the animosity, Brexit, leaving the EU, leave or remain. You know, I was on the leave campaign. Mm. There, there was a lot of antagonism and animosity within our own party and government at the time. We need to forget all that and we need to really park all that. Our job collectively is to do what's in the best interest of our country. I do think it's quite interesting. I watched some of the debate in the House of Lords yesterday with Lord Cameron speaking around the new trade Brexit freedoms policies. Yeah. And of course, it was very interesting to hear the context as to why CTPTP, the new trade yeah. deal coming forward, was speaking about that, but actually not associating it directly and using the language that it is all because of Brexit. Yeah. And it's down to our Brexit freedoms. I just think everyone needs to be humble and move on, basically, and serve our country in a very, very focused, yeah. intelligent way. I hope is that the question's for Rishi, which he's going to have to deal with about who, who's pulling his strings. But, I, you know, I've got to ask as well, there was the Supreme Court ruling last mm. week, wasn't there, on Rwanda. James Cubley's the, the man in charge mm. of delivering this now. What do you think his chances are? So, James is actually my neighbour, my Essex neighbour. Yeah. In, in, so he's the member of Parliament for Braintree. And, you know, I've, I've already spoken to James. You know, I wish him every success in what is the toughest job in government. There's no doubt about that. You've asked about the Supreme Court, and I have to say I was quite cross listening to that judgment last week right. for very good reasons, because that judgment was very similar to the Court of Appeal judgment that came out in the summer. And to be very candid, listening to that judgment, I felt that the government could have done much more work to avoid that conclusion that the Supreme Court reached, which was very much based on this whole issue of refoulement. Mm. But effectively, if you send people to a third country, they could then be removed again to another country or their country of origin and subject to, you know, persecution, fear, torture, etc. Having been the architect of the Rwanda policy and the strategy and worked with the Rwandan government, Ivan went to meet the UNHCR people in Geneva, um, had some very good discussions with them, actually, and with the foreign minister mm. of Rwanda. I felt that the government really should have knuckled down over the last 12 months and addressed many of those concerns that the court raised. Of course, James Cleverley, our new Home Secretary, will have to address those issues. I've been speaking to him about some of that already, and I've been very open with him. I will, you know, if I can give him some yeah. insight, knowledge and support on that, I absolutely will. OK, well, interesting stuff. Um, now, look, I couldn't let you get going without asking a little bit about what's going on down under, OK? Mm. Because Nigel Farage is uh, competing in I'm a Celeb. And actually, this is 
It's kind of in your wheelhouse because it covers immigration as well, this latest debate, right? So, it's quite topical, isn't it? it? Well, it is. It's almost like we planned it. Of course, we didn't. Um, uh, the fellow campmate, Nella Rose, well, trying to tear strips off him. Let's just remind ourselves a little bit about what happened, OK? Right. So when... Sorry, all the tea is coming out now. So basically... But this is what I was saying to you. Apparently, you're anti-immigrants. And Who told you that? Oh, the Who internet. Told... The oh, internet. well, there we are, then. It must be true. It must be true. It must be. <laughs> it must be true. OK, but then why don't black people like you? You'd be amazed, they do. Well, then... You'd be amazed. Nigel! If, if you came oh, with me... Nigel! If you came with me... If you, huh? came, if you came with me through South London, you'd be astonished. Oh, why? What were you doing in South London, Nigel? Well, I'm there every day. Yeah, what do you make of that? <laughs> Do you know, I think they'll be best of friends by the time that show ends, actually. I think they'll probably get on quite well. Mm. Um, I think that's interesting for a start, you know, just those gut reactions about immigration and sort of how Nigel mm. was described, basically. Um, I thought Nigel, resp his responses were pretty good in terms mm. of, you know, responding to Nella. But at the end of the day, it's inevitable. Nigel's gone into the jungle. He's going to be tested and asked about all sorts of things, from Brexit to migration. We know his views on this. Obviously, he's on GB constantly um, talking about those issues. So, you know, it's just, it's just interesting to see that. I take it, I take it you're, uh, you're not focused on entering the jungle anytime soon. No <laughs> way. I'll tell you that now. I actually haven't watched it yet this week, yeah. but I will because Nigel's on it. And obviously, you know, N N Nigel's a friend and, you know, I really wish him well. And I think he's going to do really well in the jungle. He won? He could do. He right. absolutely could do. Oh, there we go. Let's not rule it out. Let's not rule it out. Look, Chrissy, thank you very much. You're always a tremendous sport as well. It's, it's great to pleasure. have you on, you know, wide ranging stuff. Hope to see you again very, very soon. Absolutely. That is wonderful Dame Pretty Patel. Thank you for joining us.